bring in Governor Chris Christie, Republican presidential candidate, and the former governor, as I mentioned, of New Jersey. Uh, governor, always good to have you with us. Thanks, Thank Martha. You. Obviously, these are very tense times for the leader of our country. You see President Biden there on the world stage. You see protesters in the Capitol calling for a ceasefire. This president promised to get us out of long wars. He pulled out of Afghanistan. Now the United States is the, the sole supporter on two fronts, in Europe and Ukraine and in Israel. What would you do? Look, I, I think this is the price we pay for being the richest and freest country in the world. And I, and I think all these things are connected, Martha. And when Joe Biden did what he did pulling out of Afghanistan, he sent a very clear message to the rest of the world that we were pulling away from world leadership. And also made comments saying that if Russia had a small incursion into Ukraine, you'll remember, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. Obviously, Vladimir Putin has a different definition of small um, than Joe Biden did. And so when those signals are sent, a vacuum's created, and the bad actors in the world, China and Russia, we see them together today with Xi and Putin, Iran doing what it's doing with Hamas and Hezbollah, and North Korea supplying weapons to the Russians. Uh, we have to stand up against those bad actors. And so what we need to do is stand with our friends. And for 5% of the U.S. military budget, annual military budget, going to Ukraine for them to degrade the Russian military by 50% so far seems like a smart investment to me. And with Israel, there just can't be any question about us standing with them. The Jewish people have long suffered um, under the anti-Semitism that we see rising again, which is a real concern. And that's why I think the president was right to go over there. I remember, Martha, I'm sure you do too, after 9-11. One, one of the biggest moments was when Tony Blair came here and sat in the gallery for President Bush's speech to a joint session of Congress. That physical presence of our closest allies saying, we have your back, we're with you. I think that's why the president made a good move today going. That's a good point. Uh, the, the Brits ended up joining us in Iraq and yep. Afghanistan. So my question for you is, if there's an invasion and more war on the north, there's been an Axios story this morning that claims that there's discussion about U.S. troop involvement if it comes from two fronts in Israel. Would you support that? Look, it would matter to me what the, what the nature of the threat was on the ground. And was it an existential threat to Israel? Was it threatening Israel's very existence. I believe that the Israeli Defense Forces can handle a two-front war. They handled that war back in 1973, 50 years ago now, um, and won it. Um, I think they could win it again here. Um, and we would have to be guided by the request that came from Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war cabinet uh, and make an evaluation. It would not be my first instinct to send folks over there. My instinct would be to arm them sufficiently so that they can win the war themselves. Peace in the Middle East has to be won by the people in the Middle East. America can be a positive force in that. We should be. Um, but I don't know about American troops there, at least not unless it was actually the existence of Israel. If it was the existence of Israel, then we'd have to do whatever we needed to do. Okay. Um, quick question about what's going on on Capitol Hill. Uh, what a mess. <laughs> There's no speaker in the Republican House and no signs that, any, that one is coming anytime soon. Um, what do you think they should do? What, what, what's your advice? Pick a speaker. Look, this isn't hard. There are a number of good people who have already offered themselves, and this goes back to the sophistry and the selfishness of the eight people who got rid of Kevin McCarthy. You know, it looks real easy to pick a speaker or to keep a speaker until you don't have one. And now here we have two weeks. Jim Jordan's not going to get it, in my view. I mean, if you lose position in the second vote, it's going to be very hard. He's got to pick up another... 19 votes yeah, to be able to get votes, there. as you point out, in the yeah. second round here. I think the American people really don't care that much about the egos and personalities that are involved. I think they just look at it and say, you know, I don't know, put Patrick McHenry, let him do the job. All it, all it is about is just moving legislation through. Um, and I think they're tired of all this ego and, and outrage. And think about everything we need to do. We have aid to Israel. We have aid to Ukraine. The Taiwan situation. We have our southern border, which is being leaved left completely unaided, and we've got a budget that would be nice if we got done between now and November 17th, right? So all these things are happening. Every one of those things, Martha, yeah. is more important to the American people than whether it's Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise, Absolutely. Jim Jordan, or fill in the blank, whoever as, as next. As Tom Brady used to say, do your job. Yes, do <laughs> just, your job. Just do your job. And it makes us look just bad. Just do your job. For my party, Martha, it makes us look bad as Republicans that we can't get anything done. No doubt. Let's get the work done for the people right. who sent them there.
Governor, there's also a uh, presidential race coming going on, so we'll talk to you about that uh, in depth next time as well. You some bet. of these things uh, may be some real big game changers and shifts in that as well. So uh, it's always good to see you, Governor. Thanks for having Thank me, Thank you Martha. very much for coming by. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.